The Chicago Bears have a new starting center. They have signed Coleman Shelton to a one-year contract. What's going on, guys? I'm back with another Chicago Bears news update video, which I'll be doing anytime the Chicago Bears news is going on. And Ryan Poles finally made an addition at center. He did trade for Ryan Bates um, last week, but that's more of a backup trade, in my opinion, because Ryan Bates has mostly been a backup during his career with the Buffalo Bills. So I was wanting Ryan Poles to go after a starting center. On the, you know, on the starting market, and he got one, okay? He got one that's pretty average. He's not top of the market. He's not elite or great. So if you're hoping for him to be the long-term solution at center, he's definitely not going to be that. But I'm still happy with going after a starting center while you try to hopefully, you know, draft one for the long term. Maybe this year in the NFL draft or next year in the NFL draft, right? Like this at least gives the Bears a starting option at center. That has started 30 games for the LA Rams the past two seasons. He's taken over for... Uh, Brian Allen, who was their other starting center, but he suffered a lot of injuries. So uh, Coleman Shelton took over for him basically as a starting center. And he played in a very similar type of offense that Shane Waldron is going to be running here in Chicago because Sh Sean McVay runs the same wide zone system that Sean that Shane Waldron will also be running here in Chicago. I keep on getting mixed up between Sean McVay and Shane Waldron. They kind of have similar sounding names and they were both coaches together on the same coaching staff um, with the Rams, obviously. But yeah, so, you know, pretty decent signing, nothing really to write home about, like, game-changing for the Bears, but it is a big, big upgrade to get at least an average center to start for the Bears because Cody Whiter and Sam Mustafer have been two of the worst centers in all of football the past couple seasons. They've been very inconsistent um, in terms of, like, health. Also, like, Cody Whiter's been missing a lot of time. Sam Mustafer did stay healthy, but he was complete shit when he was healthy, so I'm happy to get a guy that knows you know, how to play in this league, at least was like average level for the LA Rams. So let's talk more about what he's going to be bringing to the Chicago Bears. So Coleman Shelton was a UDFA in the 2018 class. He played college ball at Washington and pretty decently athletic. You know, he can move a good amount, not not like elite level athleticism, but definitely good enough speed, good enough explosion to run in this scheme, to, to move in this scheme that is going to require the centers and the offensive linemen to move around a little bit you know, laterally and up and down the field. But if you look at the games he started then during his career, so if I put up his game started, so obviously the first couple years of his career, he really did not do that much for the LA Rams. But then in 2021, he did have to start two games due to injury to the starting center. And then 2022 and 2023, he had to play a lot of games because Brian Allen, I believe, missed a lot of time. That's why he was playing all those games. And you know, you can see last year he started every single game, 17 starting games. So I do like the fact that he did play all games in a season it shows that he can withstand the grinds of a full and in full season as a starting offensive lineman. The year prior, he also started in 13 games. So when he does get the chance to start, it seems like he has done a good job of staying healthy. And then looking at his production during those games at center. So via PFF, that's probably the best way right now to give you guys, you know, a quick breakdown of what he did as a starting center and the stats were not great last year in terms of pass protection in terms of run blocking they were really really good though he was one of the better run blocking centers in football but then the year prior in 2022 he actually did have a great season as a pass protector but not so much of a good season as a run blocker so we'll see what type of player we get in 2024 is it going to be more of the great pass protector that we got from 2022 or more of the great run blocker that we got from 2023 or maybe a mix of both hopefully a mix of both he still is you know, fairly young, still ascending in this league. So maybe he is going to get better this year, especially playing next to a really dominant guard in Tevin Jenkins, who I'm sure is going to make any decent center look even better than they actually are because Tevin Jenkins has proven to be one of the top offensive linemen in football when he is healthy and on the football field. And if you look at some of the game breakdowns from last year, he had a very tough schedule to go up against as a center. So he had to obviously go up against the 49ers twice a year who have an elite defensive line the Eagles he had on the schedule who are really really good at defensive line um, he had to go up against the New York Giants who have a very dominant interior defensive lineman obviously in Dexter Lawrence and he also had to go up against you know Baltimore and he had a you know absolute gauntlet of a schedule that he had to go up against as a center so maybe that's why his pass blocking numbers were not as high as a year prior but that, that's, that's kind of what you get with the average level center right? like you're not going to get top of the league production out of a guy like this especially on a one-year deal who's probably not going to be you know very expensive again we're not sure about the money at this point in time what he's going to be costing us this year but I can't see it being more than you know five million dollars for the year so again as a stopgap option I think it's fine 
But as a long-term option, you know, you do have to draft somebody probably in the NFL draft or, you know, maybe sign somebody next year to be that long-term center for the Bears. But as of now, I think the signing is pretty decent. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm just happy we're not gifting the starting job to Ryan Bates. Even though we did trade a fifth-round pick for him, I did want him to have competition, you know, to, to beat out if he wants to be the starting center. And getting competition like this can only make our offensive line a lot better. You know, if Coleman Shelton does win the starting job, now we got a great backup in Ryan Bates who can play guard and center. So if Tevin Jenkins, Nate Davis gets injured, you know, we have a good backup to replace, you know, whoever gets injured. And you could not have said the same thing last year or the, you know, last 10 years, honestly, being a Bears fan. We have not had good offensive line depth, but I think Ryan Poles is slowly building that for the Chicago Bears. So leave your thoughts down below. I think the Bears still have to sign a receiver. They still have to sign a pass rusher. But beyond that... Like, we don't have too many glaring needs on the roster anymore, which is kind of crazy to say, because if you look at the roster in the last couple of years, like, especially after 2022 or during 2022, like, we had so many massive needs that were not filled via free agency because we just did not have enough money to spend and we, we cannot fix everything in one offseason. But it seemed like the roster is a lot better at this point in year three under Ryan Poles. But I do kind of hope that we can get at least one splash signing to satisfy the fan base, um, whether that be... I don't know, like a Curtis Samuel. I, I'm not I'm not sure if that counts as a splash signing, but I'd be pretty happy with that. And maybe if you go after an Eric Armstead, that would definitely be a splash signing on the defensive line. The Bears are meeting with uh, DJ Wanham, the edge rusher today from the Minnesota Vikings. So maybe that could be a little bit of a splash year signing. But, you know, I, I think at this point, we know that Ryan Poles is not going to be one of those GMs that's going to go out and spend a crazy amount of money in free agency. That's just not his his motto as GM and we're gonna have to live with it probably because he does want to do the most of the roster building via the NFL draft but I do like this signing so you know leave your comments down below as always bear down.